hello everyone my name is dr babu mohan i am from uh, the university of arizona banner university medical center at tucson arizona and on behalf of my co-authors dr shahab khan who works as a research volunteer with me dr sushil trakuru from cleveland clinic foundation cleveland ohio usa dr suresh ponada from carillion ronock medical center at virginia usa Dr. Ravi Shankar Asok Kumar, a consultant gastroenterologist at Singapore General Hospital, Singapore, and Dr. Douglas Adler, our senior author from University of Utah, USA. I thank you all for watching this video statement on our paper, Endoscopic Transpapillary versus Endoscopic Ultrasound versus Percutaneous Drainage in High-Risk Acute Cholecystitis Patients, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis uh, that has been accepted for publication at Endoscopy Journal. Why did we do this study? Traditionally, patients with acute cholecystitis who are at high risk for surgery are treated via percutaneous drainage of the gallbladder. This is typically done via interventional radiology guidance. ERCP-based, transpapillary, and EUS-based options have been reported in this uh, patient population. Now, data is limited as to the comparison of technical and clinical efficacy and safety of these three methods. Multiple studies have compared transpapillary gallbladder drainage to percutaneous drainage, and there are studies comparing EUS-guided gallbladder drainage to percutaneous drainage. The data is not conclusive as to which modality is better. Uh, only recently, a couple of studies have compared ERCP gallbladder drainage to EUS gallbladder drainage in this patient population. Given the ongoing variability in the study results, we sought out to answer this question as to which gallbladder drainage modality is better in patients with acute cholecystitis who are at high risk for surgery by meta-analysis methods. What did we find? We included a total of 72 studies, um, which included 15,131 patients. 22 studies with 1,223 patients were treated with transpapillary uh, ERCP-based gallbladder drainage. 14 studies, uh, which evaluated 557 patients, were treated with EUS gallbladder drainage. And 46 studies that included 13,351 patients were treated with percutaneous gallbladder drainage. Technical success with ERCP-based gallbladder drainage was 83%. With EUS, it was 95%. And with percutaneous, it was 98%. With indirect retrospective methods of comparison, the percutaneous method was significantly superior compared to the other two methods, although EUS was still at a high 95% uh, technical success rate. The clinical success, which was very important for our analysis, with ERCP-based gallbladder drainage was 88%. With EUS gallbladder drainage, this was 97%. And percutaneous drainage, it was an 89%. Again, based on the retrospective comparison, uh, the p-value was significantly superior for EUS-guided gallbladder drainage, which was a 97%. Disease recurrence was significantly more with percutaneous drainage at 11%. Uh, disease recurrence with ERCP and EUS was approximately 4%. Adverse events were comparable between all these modalities. Pancreatitis was the most common one reported with ERCP-based gallbladder drainage. Bleeding and perforation were common with EUS guided gallbladder drainage, and stent dislocation was the most commonly reported adverse event with percutaneous gallbladder drainage. In conclusion, our study shows that EUS gallbladder drainage seems to demonstrate the best clinical success rates in patients with acute cholecystitis who are not an ideal candidate for surgical management. Retrospective comparison is a limitation of our study and therefore well conducted. Adequately powered randomized controlled trials are needed to answer this question with absolute certainty. I once again thank you all for seeing my video. Uh, thank you.